Today we're going to unbox the airmail rocket kit from Apogee Components. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox the airmail rocket kit from Apogee Components. Uh, this is one of our kits, and when you build it, it's going to look like this. And one of the unique features of it is the slots for the fins kind of look like slots in a mailbox. Um, so we were kind of having a little fun with this rocket um, when we were designing it. And this is what it's going to look like when you get it. It's going to come in a plastic bag with a nice four color face card on the front. And I'll go ahead and open it up and we can spill out the parts. Okay, so the first thing you're going to notice is the body tube. And it has these big slots in it. And these are already pre-cut using a laser, so you don't have to cut them out. Um, and it's a nice quality body tube. And here on the side, we have an etched line. That was where the launch lug is going to go so that you can take your launch lug and just simply glue it in place. No measuring involved at all on that. So that's kind of a nice little feature. Uh, this is the engine mount tube. It's a little bit longer. And the reason for that is as we, uh, as the rocket goes in there like that, we need to make sure that the centering ring that's normally like about right here on the rocket is forward of these slots. Because if it's not forward of the slots, the ejection charge, instead of blowing the nose cone off, it's going to wrap around and come out of the slots. How do we know that happens? Well, because <laughs> our very first one, that's what happened. We forgot to seal off those slots. So when you get this kit, there's going to be a centering ring that goes right here to make sure that the ejection charge doesn't go backwards out the rocket. Um, and you'll find that there are two centering rings like here. And these are going to go on the tube, something like that. And the reason for that, and here's the engine block that will go inside. And there's also an engine hook. Um, so you're going to cut a slot for the engine hook. Um, and it'll go like that. And then this goes on the inside and glued in place. The parts are color coded so you can easily tell them apart. Uh, we use some nice spring steel on the engine hook so that it doesn't, you know, you can bend it pretty far and it springs right back. So uh, in the past, we've noticed that there's some kits that the, the steel is pretty weak um, and it, they don't spring back. So once, you know, if you bend it up to get the motor out, it may stay in the up position. Uh, these are really good high, high strength steel um, engine hooks. Uh, also in the kit is a, these are uh, four color vinyl decals and they're already pre-cut so you just peel them off. And the nice thing about this, there's a decal for both sides of each of the four fins. You know, some manufacturers are going to skimp on your decals and you know, you only have decals on two fins instead of four fins and it's only on one side. Um, so here you got a full decal sheet. Um, these are the laser cut fins. And these are balsa wood. And you'll know that they have little notches cut out. And those notches are going to go centered right in between these two rings. And that gives you kind of like through the wall fin mounting. So you're gluing the fin right to the tube. And then you're smushing it together with these two rings to hold it in place. So it's really strong. So, cause you don't want these fins to break off. You can tell they're, they're on there pretty good on this rocket. So you got nice laser cut balsa wood. Uh, in here is a parachute and this is a 12 inch parachute. Um, also printed. You can see that, you know, you get a nice color, colorful parachute plastic parachute. Nothing you know really special about it. It's just a plastic parachute, but it's nice. Um, it's got the instructions on it, but the instructions are also in the kit on how to put together your parachute. You know, the parachute comes with uh, string 
and the reinforcement rings that go on the corners of the parachute to prevent them from being ripped um, when you have a, you know, a high speed deployment. Um, our string on the Apogee catch, you'll notice our string is really thick. And we do that for a reason. One, it's, it's stronger, but two, it's a lot easier for kids when they're building to tie knots in thick string rather than really thin string like you might find on a spool of thread. Um, so that's your parachute. Um, it also comes with a Kevlar shock cord. Now we use Kevlar because it's flame resistant and it's six times stronger than steel. Is it three times stronger than steel? So um, this is 100 pound Kevlar and it's braided Kevlar. Um, so you can have a nice, your shock cord's never gonna, you know, the, the problem with rubber shock cord is eventually the rubber deteriorates and, you know, the nose cone could go flying off. With Kevlar, that's pretty much never gonna happen. Uh, we have a polystyrene, high impact polystyrene nose cone. Um, it's nice and smooth, it's blow molded. Um, it takes paint really well. You know, there's some plastics like polypropylene. You paint them and the paint will peel right off. It's gonna stick, you know, like it was molded in to high impact polystyrene. Um, we have a big loop down here for attaching your shroud lines and the um, shock cord. Um, I know on some other kits that hole is like really small and you got to get six lines of string through it plus your shock cord. So we make ours big so that it's easy to tie on. Um, this is, you know, really hard plastic and that's really good. You also get laser cut centering rings and these are cardstock. Um, as I, I was talking about them before, you know, they, they fit here. There's going to, you're going to use two of them on here along with these two rings. So it's built a little bit different and that's kind of why it's a skill level three rocket rather than a two or a one because there's more involvement in, you know, assembling it. Um, also in here are instruction sheets and this is a six page instruction sheet. So on the front, you have a little story about the airmail. You know, it's the rocket that pushes the envelope. Get it? Pushes the envelope. That's an aeronautical term. And envelope is also used in the post office. So we're having a little bit of fun playing with puns. Um, you also have the parts list right here, the shock cord anchor. And then as you open it up inside, you'll see there's a lot of drawings. And we use a lot of drawings to make sure that it's easy to put together, you know, so there's no ambiguity in, in assembling the rocket. You know exactly where things are going to go. Uh, here's a picture here what the engine mount is going to look like once you assemble it. Um, you know, it has three big rings and those two small green rings. Um, so there's, you know, a lot involved in there. Um, yeah, painting instructions, you know, how to put on your decals. All that information is in the instructions. So that is the airmail rocket kit, and you'll find it at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com.